You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, Miss Claire Somers. Hi. Claire. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm amazing. You look like a million bucks. Thank well, she you. better. Okay, that's Thank her you. job. Yes, that She's was the goal today. <laughs> creator of Fashion Bomb Daily. Mm -hmm. And by the way, she went to Harvard. I know your daughter is planning to go to Harvard. Oh, really? Yeah, you went to Harvard? I mm -hmm. sure did. What was your major? French and African American Studies. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My my parents didn't really know what I was going to do with that degree. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody ever knows what to do with an African American Studies degree. Why well, go to Harvard for that? You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do or mm -hmm. what I wanted to major in when I went to Harvard. I just went. I got in. I got gotcha. in early, and I just went. And then when um, when I was there, my brother actually went to Harvard also. And oh, he wow. was like, it doesn't matter what you what you major in. People only pay attention to the fact that you went to Harvard. A Harvard right? alumni, yeah. So I just majored in what <laughs> I wanted fact. to, and I graduated, you know, magna cum laude. And now down the road, it really doesn't matter what I majored in. Yeah, I didn't go to college, but I always tell kids, if you can't figure out what you want to do in life, just go to school. It's a good time. It's a good place to waste time. And yeah. most people <laughs> major, and most time. People, and most people major in something and ha do nothing that has to do with their major when they graduate anyway. So. Yeah. And it, it actually, um, it ended up making sense. I moved to Paris. My story is that I really wanted to work in fashion. From? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I grew Georgia. up in okay. Stone Mountain. Stone okay. Mountain. Stone Georgia. Mountain, okay. Yeah. My sister lives there. We'll round up and say Atlanta. But the story is, is that I really wanted to work in fashion. I wanted to work at all these different fashion mm -hmm. magazines. People looked me up and down and told me that fashion was not for me. So I ultimately quit my job, moved to Paris with like $2,000 in my bank account. It was like, if I have to start at the bottom and break into fashion and do an internship and make no money, then that's what... That's what I'm going to do. How can why, you look somebody up and down and say fashion? Yeah, why is not would for they them? say that? What is that even? I don't know. I mean, I've been blogging since 2006 and I started putting my pictures up pretty early. So if you look back, you'll, you'll, you might understand why. Or maybe I she, said maybe that. she didn't have a fashion together quite yet. I didn't, or she didn't yeah, have a sense I had of style. To, I had but she used to dress like me. How I look now? You know what? You actually, you're pretty fly, Charlamagne. Right. Charlamagne used to be bad. Like, really? I'm still bad. Suits. Yeah, I mean. He used to wear, what did he have with his name on the back? Oh, I don't even. Was that a so fur coat? Things. I don't a fur know. Coat it had his on name back? on it. I don't remember. I think it was no, a faux fur. fur. It was a faux fur. <laughs> okay. It was a faux fur. fur. Let's be clear. I was scared yeah. of real fur because I thought that Peter would throw stuff on you. Oh, okay. Is now, that a Claire, real fur you got on? Right? This is real fur. Ooh. Ducky confetti. I wish Peter would. I love a good fur. I, I, you know, it's cold outside. Now, uh, Claire, let's talk about this because obviously I look at you know your blog all the time, Fashion Bomb Daily. What? Um, is it with people that think that you have to have money to dress fly? Because that's definitely not true. There's people that have money and wear name brand stuff, yeah. and it's not necessarily fly, and there's people that don't have money like that. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I think it's a common misconception. Mm -hmm. I think especially in our community, we always think we have to be wearing Balmain and Saint Laurent and all that stuff, but I'm wearing Zara today. Um, I like Zara. Thank you. We're in rare jeans, um, a young black designer. You know, mm -hmm. I like to support young black designers right. because I don't feel like they get enough support in the fashion industry, but I mix it up. You right. know, you can Because I see people wearing like head to toe of one brand. Yeah, especially in Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta people are, are a little guilty of that. I mean, I love my Atlanta folks, but they're always like, you know, wearing $5,000 worth of clothes, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Now, who do you uh, style that we would know? I'm not a stylist. I'm a journalist. You know, okay. after I graduated from Harvard, I did a bunch of internships at New York Magazine, Newsweek Magazine, Upscale Magazine. I've just been a journalist for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I just decided to start a blog because I wasn't getting what I needed at my regular job. And it took off because we focus on everybody. We focus on diversity, but we also fo focus on you know, black people. And a lot of right. times black people, they love fashion. And we focus on all those stars that have a huge following, but a lot of people don't pay attention to. So like gotcha. Young Thug, for example, we did a great interview with him and he loves, 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 loves fashion. Yo Gotti, like, you know, a lot of people that Vogue wouldn't normally cover. Do you think designers make clothes so black people can't wear? Because you notice what most, most designers, especially European designers, they they make clothes and they only go up to size thirty four jeans. Yeah, and they and they're extra large is really like a size medium. Yeah, like they don't make clothes for us, but yet we try our hardest to we get those do. clothes. We do. We really do. Um, they're just made for people without curves. Without, I just bought a pair of Givenchy boots and my calves are humongous. So I have to go <laughs> in and get them like put an insert in so that my calves can fit in there. We're just trying to make it work because it's fly. If we run a pass out over some boots. 
I, I cut did. all your circulation I off. I did. I actually have the boots in black, and I just wanted to wear them for Thanksgiving. So I went to the airport. I just kind of pulled them on. Had to have security pull them off of me. And oh my god! Really, girl? Hey, listen, man, I was like, I got, I was like this is too much. You know, I, got, like, I, I got, had this plan. I got a coin on each baby toe. For trying to fit my feet in the designer shoes. Yeah. My feet are wide as hell, and they, I'm, you squeeze them in anyway. Yeah, we got to look fly. Now now what about, what's, go ahead. What's next for fashion as far as, well, let's do uh, men first. What's next for fashion as far as men? Men, I think there's always this attempt to kind of go the androgynous route, like the kilts. I was just in Bahamas. Okay, Bahamas let me rephrase fashion. that for, for black men. What's, for what's black next for, men. for black men? Y'all too. We're not wearing no, I'm not yes, wearing no you kilt. Yes, you you're too old for that, but the young kids will. Wearing a kilt? Yeah, puff puff stuff out in a kilt. He what's looked funny? ridiculous. You, you think so? He definitely yes, looked like he a <laughs> he, looked, kilt. he looked absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but I think it's just about individuality. I've been seeing a lot of kilts in, in the stores, though. I'm not going to lie. I, I've been seeing them at Barney's. I've been seeing a lot of places. I wish you yeah. would come in here with I a kilt. I thought about it one day. I said, I should rock this kilt. You should. You should. I, I, was like, I support that. Nah, it's not me. And and I know, that means the, you rub his shoulder real quick. I got ugly knees. Like, you know, men's sportswear has changed so much. Because I think about how we would go to the Magic, and the men's sportswear was just all over the place. All the rappers had clothing lines, every label everything yeah. but it's so different now because that yeah. was when people were wearing like the baggy things the big logos it's mm-hmm. not like that at all anymore yeah people are wearing clothing that is tailored to their body mm-hmm. and logos I feel like they're never going to go away you love a good logo I pay attention to your style and you love loves a good logo. I love a little I'm, I'm like I, I'll make something very expensive with something very cheap like I'll yeah. wear some expensive jeans but then I'll go to go get a, a, a Ralph Lauren T-shirt, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. That's inexpensive. That like the head Wait, to did he Gucci. just say Ralph Lauren <laughs> is inexpensive? Yeah, the T-shirts would be like nine dollars. You could get a, those for three dollars. You can get uh, <laughs> you know, they, they used to have Mosimo at Target, you know what I'm saying? But now they have, I think it's called Battleground, I believe. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think. Ralph Lauren fits the arms better. But go ahead. Now, what no, else Goodfellas. Is, that's what it's called Goodfellas. at Target. Goodfellas, Goodfellas. Goodfellas T-shirts. Yes. And what about what else for men? Sounds mob esque. For men, I just I, I just see tailored 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 clothing, things that work for you. I don't think people are really following t- trends. When you look at Kanye West, he just wears a white t shirt and jeans and some Yeezys, you know, dope shoes. So I see I a lot of guys wearing really long shirts that look like dresses kind of. I yeah. can't get too. with that. Yeah. And the oversized, I can't it's too I can't. <laughs> is the distressed look still in? Distressed look is still in. Okay. Do you like a Miri jeans? I don't even know what that means. Amiri jeans, they're they're similar to these with the chains on them, but they mm-hmm. have like leather inserts. The jeans I wear all the time with the inserts. Yeah. No, I like PRPS and Hudson. Yeah. And because PRPS is a black owned company too. Yeah, we yeah. Like these to are Miri jeans. Black, black yeah. owned. What? But I, I like Fear of God too. But the problem with Fear of God is that I, what I don't like is this is gonna sound crazy. I have the same problem with the calves. They make the, the bottom too narrow, right? Right. So you have to get a size bigger, but then your waist is double the size. Mm-hmm. And what the fear of God does is they don't make that <laughs> many of them, so it's it's difficult to find. Right, right. Now, what about for women? What's what's next for women? For women, monochromatic looks are always good. Mm-hmm. I really see logos like this whole Gucci takeover and Gucci partnering up with Dapper Dan. They're they're having a moment, so I feel like every it's getting too much though now. You think so? Hell yeah! Remember when Gucci had fell off for a little while? Yeah, they came. And back they had a nice, vengeance. strong comeback. Yeah, I was telling my readers to buy stock in Gucci. The way that we were reporting on it, everybody was wearing. It. Gucci had fell off. I didn't know. Oh, Gucci fell off for years. Absolutely, about five, six I wouldn't years. buy any Gucci, but now really? it's like they have some of the best stuff out. Yeah, with Alessandro Michelle and. Balenciaga is another big brand. Mm-hmm. But, um, what are some brands, I want to ask you this, what are some brands that used to be huge but ended up just going away? So if you many. could think, yeah. Aniche. But some, <laughs> I'm not even talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking about like some, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, some people had baby fat tattoos day. and everything. I saw a Sean John store in the airport. <laughs> yeah, in Atlanta. Apple bottom jeans. In Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, I, was like, I was like, they still wear Sean John? They got a whole Sean John store in the airport in Atlanta. It was empty yeah, though, right? I mean, Sean John is yeah. killing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, still now? like $500 million in sales, I want to say. Well, my bad, Diddy. Now they yeah. Still, they still yeah, sometimes them. we don't know because even overseas or like in other cities outside of New York, people buy things. People still rock it. Yeah, yeah very regional. Mm-hmm. You know what I love that you do is that you show people like somebody will hit you and be like, what is this person wearing? Yeah. And then you guys will identify it, what brand it is, how yeah. much it costs and everything. Right. And that's helpful because sometimes you look at uh, people's pictures and you're like, man, I love whatever, whatever she has mm-hmm. on, those mm-hmm. jeans, or I love that sweatshirt, but... What is it? I think the key to one of the keys to Fashion Bomb Daily's success is that we are a very reader 
Centric. Mm -hmm. We're not sitting up at some ivory tower dictating down to you what you should wear, what you shouldn't wear, what's hot or what's not hot. And we really do interact with readers, and that's part of the reason I'm having Cocktails with Claire on Saturday. You participated Mm -hmm. before. But um, that's part of the reason that I always give back to the readers because I understand that they're the reason why, why we're here. Now, what is Cocktails with Claire? Cocktails with Claire is an opportunity for Fashion Bomb Daily readers to interact offline as they do online. We have panels where we discuss breaking into entertainment or fashion. And then we just party and have fun. Um, There isn't really a lot of infrastructure in terms of support for designers of color and minority designers in the fashion industry. So we're trying to be that beacon and that voice for an underrepresented but very powerful demographic. Now, now is it true Queen Latifah's character in Girls Trip Sasha was based off you? Yeah. Not... I don't think her storyline was based off of me because she mm-hmm. was a gossip blogger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they said that they styled her based off of me. Really? hmm Wow. Because they said that it's hard to find curvy women who adopt trends in their wardrobe and, yeah. When did you realize that? Like, did they tell you after the movie came out? Did they tell you before that they, they were doing that? Um, they did an interview in The Hollywood Reporter. Okay. Yeah. That Dope. must have been very yeah. flattering. It was. It yeah. was It was yeah. mind-blowing because, honestly, I see the numbers. I see 1.3 million, but it doesn't translate in my mind that people are actually looking at me and watching and being inspired. So I'm always, I'm always surprised by anything, any recognition, even being on here, I'm like so grateful because I'm such a huge fan. So you have no choice but to be Sasha. Like if it's you and your girls, you're like, well, who are you from Girls Trip? You have to be Sasha. I have to be <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> gotcha. yeah. How long did it take for your blog to take off? Because I'm sure in the beginning, a lot of people are trying to figure things out, tailor their blogs. And like you said, you created it because there wasn't really a space yeah. in what it is that you were doing. So how long was it until that finally took off? And what was that breaking point? Um, Almost immediately, thankfully maybe three months in. Back in the day, I used to crash all the fashion shows. I would crash baby the baby fat shows. Hey. So I was one of the first <laughs> bloggers in the building at New York Fashion Week. So I would go in there and take video with my digital camera, and then I'd post, and the old blogs, like, Concrete Loop or... Concrete YB- Loop. Remember that? Oh God, Loop. Yeah. Concrete, yeah, or the YBF, which is still around. Yeah, Shout out to Natasha. Yeah, yeah but um, they shouted us out. So YBF was one of the first sites that ever shouted us out. And then afterwards, Nicole Bitchy, we worked a lot with Nicole Bitchy. Salute to Nicole. Mm-hmm. Salute to Nicole. Yeah, we did fashion commentary for her. So we really continued to strive and succeed because of other, I guess, bigger sites giving, showing love back to us. Now the Shade Room will, will shout us out when they do their TSR. Shout to Shade Room. Bish stole my look or whatever. <laughs> um, so it, it was pretty pretty immediate. But, you know, you have ups and lows. It's a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Is it profitable? It is profitable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Shane but you have over to there for nothing. Listen, <laughs> 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 but you have to continue. It's it's a hustle mm-hmm. because at first you were make, we were making all of our money from on site advertising. Then everybody went over to Instagram. Right. So a lot of people like media takeout, for example, used to be huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, social media takeout. They yeah. kind of fell off. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they didn't transition over to Instagram. That was a guy too. That's true. Yeah, you can't yeah. just hold on to that old way of doing things. Mm-hmm. You have to evolve as much as you love it. So we transitioned over to Instagram, and then we started doing events. Mm-hmm. I wrote a book. I'm I'm hosting. Like I, right. I'm all, always all over the place. And because... you still are a journalist for other organizations, for Essence, right? Yeah, I've written for Essence. For I wrote Vogue. for Italian Vogue, mm-hmm. for Paris Vogue. I don't really work for anybody else right now. But though. you do some freelance. I, I Occasionally, mm-hmm. but the book was the bomb life. The bomb life. Did you read it? For some reason, I feel like I did. Yeah, um, Jovi from from Serve Fresh. She told me she said. Yeah. It. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. My brand, my terms. Yes. I so did. How, read how it. do you find out what's next? It's like you know, a lot of people they always want what's next because by the time it hits the stores, it's already done, been ran through. Everybody has it. How do yeah. you find out what's next? Just going to Fashion Week. I was just in uh, London, Milan. For the Paris. regular person, because they can't make it to Fashion Week. Well, you know, you can go on Vogue.com, you can go on FashionBondDaily.com, and mm-hmm. you'll see everything that's on the runway. What's played on. out that you don't want to see no more of? <laughs> <sighs> I'm kind of sick of the track pants. You're sick of the Leather track, track pants? pants was so trash when you look back they at it. They were. I'm kind of <laughs> over, like, the sheer dresses. What do you guys think of the sheer? You know the sheer look when a woman is just wearing a bra and panties and you can see on the red carpet? Right. You, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Do you like, do you guys like those? I never paid no attention, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, they Why don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of so. tired of the sheer look. I, I've seen it a lot. 
Yeah. I like to wear You had a sheer shirt, shirt on one day. I did. He did, yeah. He did have on a shirt. He did. I did. It was a sweater. <laughs> it was a sweater. It was like a black sweater. I was like, what are you wearing? It was about, it was you can see everything. It's nipples and all that. What are you doing? I was what sexy. about cutouts? Cutouts. On cutouts on dresses, no. The bodycon look, no. Platform. Shoes. I don't really like it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if you can pull it off, then. You know what I love, and I still can't help it? I love. Um, when they cut out the sleeve, like on a sweatshirt or something like that. Yeah, like well, what you yeah. have well, on. Have holes in it. <laughs> I like yeah. the crop top sweatshirts too. Yeah, for men. I, for women, you ask. Oh. <laughs> but I really no, like... men are wearing crop tops too now. No, no, Ezekiel no. Elliott. Men are wearing um, what do they call it? Male rompers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The male oh yeah, the uh, the, the Ray wears a lot of those. The Ray <laughs> McKesson. Oh, I thought you said. <laughs> I thought you said D-ray, D-ray McKesson. Sorry, no, the Ray the Ray McKesson wears a lot of those. Now you used to have dreads too, right? I did, I did. I cut off my locks about five weeks ago. Wow. Um, basically, I got, I dyed my hair red for Fashion Week, trying to switch it up, and my hair was ruined. Oh, and so man. instead of mm. walk around with ruined hair, I just cut it off and decided to put a wig on. Oh, they, so you got a fresh bag of dreadlocks. I got, yeah, yeah. So some people have been up in arms and upset. That I saw I, that. They feel like you sold out. But it's just everybody you see, most black women that you see in entertainment or on TV have a weave or a wig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't really see what the big deal is. And this one girl, she said, oh, now you look basic because what? you have, you, you, you know, basic? like, yeah, she's like, before when you had locks, you were distinctive and now you look basic. But I'm you like, know, weaves and silly. wigs, I realize, especially when you're in media, you're on television, you're a personality, mm-hmm. they're protective hair, hairdos because if you get your real hair still um, styled all the time yeah. and put all that heat to it and all that product, it ruins and damages your hair. Yeah. So a lot of times people do that because they don't want to ruin their natural real hair. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's a protective thing. And for a long time, I was behind the computer. I didn't really come out. But when you're the face of your brand, especially of a fashion brand, you mm-hmm. do have to switch things up and do different things. Look at Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna, absolutely. Rihanna's a fashion icon, and she always switches it up. But how do you yeah, dress for mad long, though, right? Like 15 years. Right? 15 years, yeah. I got dreads in 2001. Wow. But how do you do it? Because it's very expensive, you know, because you can't wear the same outfit twice. And if it is, it got to be way down the line. Yeah. So you have to have either a huge closet. She got I do ho- have a huge closet. It's and, a problem. Can, I'm like a hoarder. And you got a lot of hookups, I'm sure, though. With the people that can be like, here, wear yeah. this and Every give it back. Every day I have <laughs> boxes of stuff oh, that's good. piled up at my door, which is a blessing. I'm never going to complain about that. But <laughs> I have to move. I'm actually moving to L.A. to work for Revolt. But um, I'm moving to L.A. and hopefully... In a bigger now let's yeah, talk about this partnership with right? Revolt. So yes. What, what are you doing with Revolt? Because we're on Revolt right now. Woo, Revolt. <laughs> <laughs> Look excited. No? Okay, fine. <laughs> 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 He's like, uh, anyway, um, so they are launching a style channel, mm-hmm. and Fashion Mom Daily is going to be at the forefront of that. So we've That's done dope. interviews with Karuchi Tran, mm-hmm. Latoya Luckett with Tank. We just were on set with Yo Gotti. So just doing, talking about fashion. Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals, yeah. yep, yep. So we've done a lot of really great work, and I'm just going to continue to do that. We have interviews lined up with Keisha Kaor in Miami. want to go into her closet mm-hmm. with Trina, Ashanti, just a bunch of people. It's always easier. You know, I, I salute to you guys for talking about the gossip, but it's always easier to go in from the fashion angle because right. it's so neutral. You know? Yeah, the artists aren't as tense. You right. know what I'm saying? They're not, yeah. they're not they're comfortable. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Cause... They can't wait to open their closet and say, here. Right. Yeah, because with Yo Gotti, his, his manager was like, don't ask about it. I was like, I didn't even know what she was referring to. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, They didn't tell us I, that clearly. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I was just like, tell me. And, and Yo Gotti loves fashion. He was showing me images from when he was young with dozens of gold rope chains in the club. So. It was fun. I'm always shocked about how hood niggas know so much about fashion. Especially Southern. Southern hood niggas. Yeah, it's from the Rappers. mud. Because yes. they want to yes. look clean. Yes. Nah, but they be knowing like the designers from all over the it's, world. It's like, they're into it. Like, they're the, absolutely like the Migos really be on their fashion. Yeah. Young yeah. Thug, Especially you know, Offset. Young, young Thug. Young Thug, young thug, thug fashion. loves and Young Thug will push that limit. He wear, pushes the limit. He'll wear a dress. It's dope on him sometimes. And I asked him, I was like, "Do you ever? did you ever get bullied for the way that you dress? And he was like, no, nobody ever. And Thug was a gangster. With me. He's still yeah. a gangster. Yeah. Yeah. So he's him. like, I dare you to talk about see? me in a dress. What old school brand would you like to see come back? What old school brand would I like to see come back? 
I did like baby fat. They had a moment. You want no, the I'm just kidding. You are not going to give up this baby. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet tea. No, sweet tooth or whatever. I don't know. I've never thought about it. I'd mm-hmm. love to see at least the least sneakers come back. I thought they were dope back in the day. Remember Troop? Troop came back for a little bit. Oh, it did? They did Is Fila back? Fila's, Fila's back. Yeah, Fila's, Fila's back. Fila got some Barney designs that are pretty dope now. I remember Crush Barney Colors the trying dinosaur? to make a comeback. Remember that? Oh, Shut yeah. Up, you know another... Barney's the store. The store that you brought stuff back to before. Oh, I thought you meant like they had the purple dinosaur on the clothes. No, man. Barney's and Fila nice. did something. Yeah, Crush Colors tried to make that comeback. Carl Kanai would be another good one. Carl Kanai. He's back, though. Only got the store in L.A.? Yeah. Hey. But I want to see a bigger push for him. You know? What about Mecca or something? Remember Mecca back in the day? I remember Aniche. Yeah. Aniche. Oh, that's what I meant. That's what I said. Aniche. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They was dope. With the big rhinoceros on it. Now, what, what what is romance language? Did you? They said you majored in romance language as French. well. French. Oh. Yes. Why do they call it romance language? <laughs> Je parle français. <laughs> Couramment. Oh. Which is, by the way, perfect for when you have to go to the fashion show. He knows the Creole show. stuff. Dad, tell him guys some Creole. He knows oh, that you know stuff. Creole? He knows to get my mom. No, Fuka, Fuka, when I think, when I think French, when you say French, I think of that skunk. What was that skunk name? <laughs> Pepe Le Pew. I was always sexually assaulting the other skunk. <laughs> <laughs> Pepe. Yeah, I always think of that. That's interesting. French, yeah. So French is the only romance language? No, it's French, Italian. I want to say Spanish is in that is lumped into there. Why though? Why those languages? It sounds romantic. Yeah, they they sound. Talk to me French. It's something nice. It sounds sexy. Uh, Charlemagne, je suis trop ravie d'être ici avec vous. Yes. Et j'espère que vous passez un, une belle journée. Anytime. Right. He said, Do you have a small penis? He replied, Yes, all the time. All my French peeps, you hear me? You hear me? My. All right, so cocktails are clear. How can people get tickets? Because that is happening on Saturday. It's happening Saturday. They can get their tickets at cwctynyc.eventbrite.com. The links are in my profile. I'm throwing it with Ty Hunter, who's. Yes. Ty. Ty. Ty! What up, Ty? Yeah, Ty. celebrity stylist Ty Hunter. We have Robert Verdi coming, Jay Manuel, um, iconic stylist Patricia Field. So it's going to be wow. a really good time. Her store closed. I was disappointed, man. I know. I used to go there all the time. I know. It was a good moment. But <laughs> she's iconic, so I'm, I'm happy to have her. Nice. Right. Sex well, in the City, Patricia Field. Well, yes. thank you for joining us. Thank you. It. Tell Gia I said what's up. I definitely will. <laughs> and why well, I'm going to start calling you when I, when I need to know some trends, You need to go too. to their closet. I know. Balmain. She is a Balmain. You know, she has obsession. everything. She I has know. Every what did you think about Drake buying those um, Birkin bags for his future wife? He said that's smart. That's an investment. He's been yeah. investing in buying Birkin bags. That's smart. They do appreciate in value. Some mm-hmm. of these things do hold or appreciate. Value. I got an email that Birkin Chanel prices do. are about to go up. Four hundred dollars. Why do I know all this? Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> because I know because you got money. Because I'm married. I'm married. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, thank you, Claire, for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you. Now we're gonna get your number so I can get up on the newest trends. Okay. <laughs> Claire Somers, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.